Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Juice in the Morning. I am your host, Justin Juice Kelly. Shane is not here today, but across from me is a gentleman that uh, showed me my very first Joe Rogan podcast. He uh, got me interested in starting a podcast. We talked about it all the time. I made all the excuses, and we didn't start the podcast until 2012. How's it going today, Johnny Bowden? I'm doing very well. Glad I'm, to be here. I'm glad to have you on. We've talked about this for years. It's a very exciting day, I feel like. Absolutely. It's, uh, yeah. Football's getting ready to start, all that good stuff, and we've got Johnny on here. We we're hanging out again. I appreciate it. I appreciate you coming on and doing the show. Next to him, though, is Kyle Buck. Yo, yo, yo. How are you doing today, man? Doing well. You are a stand up well. comedian. I feel like you're just kind of trying to be a mogul. So you're a stand up comedian, run a show. Yeah. You're, you're, you're over there at uh, in Anderson at Kettle Top. I feel like you're building the comedy scene there in Anderson that I feel like is, never, is unprecedented and it's never been seen before in Anderson. Yeah, I uh, am hoping to, man. I, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, we do the open mic, we run um, a couple of showcases and uh, um, some other pretty big shows, which we'll get into in a little bit, um, as well as the podcast Backstage Laugh Podcast. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, um, you know, just trying to bring some stuff to town that, you know, hasn't been there. So. Johnny's somebody that I've always said needed to try stand-up comedy. We've oh, talked about sure. it for years. I feel like if you headed, headed up to Anderson for a Wednesday night open mic, you'd have a blast because I tried it. It was a bucket list item. You know, it's not something that I feel like I'm going to continue to do. Sure. I, I mean, I might. I, I just, I got to, I, I want to be better than I am and I know that that takes doing it more often Yeah, and I just don't know if I can do it enough to get to where I would like to be. Like, I sure. would like to at least be good at it as but, opposed to... But you've blown that door open. Yeah. You've, you, you've done it. You know what I mean? Right. You, you've gotten up there and, and there's uh, that first... Um, that uh, that first time on stage is a is is a very awkward one and it's a very... You know, even for, you know, guys like yourself that talk to you know tons of people tons every of people week all the time. and uh you know it's it when you're on stage and it's just you and you get that immediate response it's a definitely very humbling experience and you're more than welcome to come on up man uh um we have them the second wednesday of every month yeah so. and uh what's funny is is i had written out a bunch of stuff before going up there and doing it on the way there i was like nope fuck it i'm gonna tell a story that i know i've told like a hundred thousand times and that's gonna be way more comfortable for me to do than this stuff that i just wrote down on a piece of paper yeah. and thought was going to be funny, but I wasn't sure if it was funny or not. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, but Johnny, so where would you say you started listening to podcasts? Rogan, right? Uh, so I got, I was put on house arrest as a young lad <laughs> and uh, there was nothing to do when you're on house arrest, but sit in your house. Pull that up a little bit. Yeah. I knew I was, I, we just got to tell you. Yeah, you got to, yeah. <laughs> just put hammer your fist that, in there. Hammer that in there. But uh <laughs> I was uh, just joined Twitter, like Twitter had just started, mm-hmm. and I'm scrolling through and I saw this thing called Ustream, and I just clicked on it, and it was Joe Rogan's first ever episode. And oh, I, shit. Yeah, I've uh, back when he was sitting on a couch, yeah. and uh, yeah, it was the very first episode, and I was hooked right then and there. Was, and yeah. and their, 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 their whole setup was like ahead of its time every time. Like he's always, like whenever you see what they're doing even now, he's ahead of other podcasts because he's oh, yeah. doing like just different stuff. And I wonder if that's, that, that can't all be Joe Rogan. That's got to be some of the people that are around him in his camp, like helping yeah. him with like producing stuff and things like that because he's had multiple producers, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, well, he was Red Band. Yeah, first, Red Band's right? an incredible mind for, right. yeah. But he's uh, like kind of like ventured off and done his own thing now, right? Like he's like, yeah, he's, he's doing the Kill Tony thing. Um, um, which is which uh, you actually incredible. got a chance yeah. to be a part of? Yeah, I was really? on Kill Tony. Yeah, yeah, I got my name drawn in Fort Wayne. That's so awesome. I went up and did sixty seconds in front of Red Band, Tony Hinchcliffe, and uh, um, uh, Andy Kindler. How did and that feel? Band. It was insane, dude. Yeah. It was absolutely in fucking insane. Um, sixty seconds feels so short. Yes, it does. And but I had I had been like preparing that sixty seconds. I had two jokes in mind um, that are kind of my. Uh, uh, probably too strongest or at least that I could do in a minute mm-hmm. and um, you know I it, it was super weird like I, I listen to Kill Tony regularly religiously whenever it comes on I'm like yes I'm listening to Kill Tony because um, it's just one of those random things that whenever you pull something random like a name out of a hat or a bucket or something like that that's always you never know what you're going to get uh, very Forrest Gump style um, and 
uh, when when my name was called, I like I don't know. It, it was the weirdest thing. Like I knew to be prepared, but don't expect it. You know what I mean? And so when my name was called, I was like, "All right, here's that thing that I you know mentally there it prepared is. myself for." Yeah, that was you. Yeah, it was August fourth. Yeah, 4th. yeah it, it's uh, and it's on um, YouTube. Um, That's you, awesome. Yeah, you, you can look up the the. Uh, are you are you on there? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, dude, we're gonna look that up. And yeah. you will savagely roast anybody who sucks. Oh yeah. I, <laughs> well, and, and, and I I did pretty well. I, I did pretty well and, and got roasted. It was hilarious. So, uh, so what? what and I, I didn't mean that like no you no no no, 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 no I'm no, just no. saying like from the few times I've watched it. Yeah. Just, like Hinchcliffe is. Oh yeah relentless. yeah he, he well he and Jeremiah Watkins are are roast minded guys. Uh, Jeremiah Watkins, who I think is probably the future of comedy. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say that right now. He's he's probably gonna end up on SNL hilarious character actor um do yeah you, do you have a spot that's just yours or yes you, okay. yeah uh, well i mean it, like you, you know you where have it's to at go. It, yeah i think it's about 19 minutes sorry in. guys yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm right after that first guy all right um let's get there but yeah uh yeah he uh, uh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah there it is yep, yep there it is so yep he's so, getting yeah. off stage or about to call my name right all now right. So are you sitting in the crowd? I'm in the back. All the comics are in the back. Oh, so you already already knew that you were going to be there. Okay. Uh, Yeah. John Coltrane called. He said, put some pants on. Is that the right instrument? (laughs) All right. This is is awesome that you got to do this, man. Yeah. So cool. He's also dead. Sorry for him to call. (laughs) I spoke with him recently. All right, I pulled another. I'm glad that we can do this now with the TV, dude. It's so awesome. Yeah, thanks, Jamie. I'm glad that you pulled that up. (laughs) Wow, here he comes from the back. Is that Thor? Exciting. Did anybody else see that? (laughs) (laughs) I think we have good bucket energies tonight. This is actually Red Band's birthday. That's awesome. Yeah. See the opening joke. How about one more time for the great and powerful Kyle Buck? They got him. They got him. Yes. uh, Packed in there, too. Yeah, there's about 200 people in there. So I've been branching out my social media recently. Uh, Done Facebook a while. Starting Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Hashtags are a challenge. Kind of got me in some trouble. I uh, saw a friend of mine post a delicious meal, said hashtag food porn. Another friend of mine posted an inspirational quote, said, Hashtag word porn. It's like, all right, I'll give it a shot. All I did was post pictures of my niece's birthday party with hashtag child porn. Uh, <laughs> now, I can't use the internet. Uh, but if you think they're hard for me, imagine how hard it is for our older age folks. Sitting down in the news with my grandma recently, and she said, you know... They're trying to stop sexual harassment in Hollywood. Maybe pound me too, sending a mixed message. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, played. thank you guys. That's my time. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. Fuck yeah, Kyle Buck. Yes. Yeah, hell yeah. You know, I know a guy that lost 180 pounds. I uh, found it. I found it. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> Have you thought about doing edgy material at all, going into a controversial area? Yeah, that's what I'm going for. Like public planning. Yeah, absolutely. That was edgy. That's more edgy than I was. I'm not that edgy. It's Yeah, I'm not very edgy myself. (laughs) <laughs> well, but I mean the material. The material oh, oh, okay. It took him a minute to get oh, that, too. Yeah, yeah. Get the, the joke. <laughs> Tony's still <laughs> processing it. <laughs> but no, no, no. But I mean, uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Kyle, that was a fun set all around. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And Tony was just cool um, in general. stand up? Um, about two and a half years. Oh, yep. cool. Where at? Um, I run a couple shows up in Anderson. Anderson, uh, where's that at? About an hour and a half south. Hour yep. and a half south. Yeah, hour halfway between here and, and Indy, basically. South. That's my old haunt, hunt, haunting, hunting grounds. Red band with the drops, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. Really? Yeah. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> you look like you played in more of a blue cheese band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry that one slipped out. I didn't mean it. Who is that? Sorry. That's, that's Jeremiah yeah. Watkins. That's uh, a dream right there, getting roasted by yeah. Jeremiah Watkins. So every episode oh, yeah. they do characters. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, dreams. And, uh, <laughs> 
God. That's I mean, awesome. Absolutely. First, I don't think that's the first time you've been touched by an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I can't come up with that, this quality of material. So. No, it's good. You're killing well, it. I'm just doing Jewish aside. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? They kept you up there for a while, too. Did they yeah, do that with yeah. everybody? Or is that, I think, uh, well, they, they, they interview everyone after. Okay. Where in the moment, killing it. Uh, gigantic scary motherfucker. <laughs> like, this looks like the guy that they bring in. Like if there was a video game this about is the best bouncers, roast right here. <laughs> this would be the final boss that you have to beat in that video game to get through every bouncer and every bar. Here, here it comes right here. Fight. Be I think King, I just... King Fupa. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. That was that was probably my favorite one. Yeah. But yeah, no, he oh, does. He does like a great. little interview with everyone right a after. Dream so. to be roasted by yeah. me. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, but uh, getting to meet the guys afterwards, Red Band was super cool. Uh, that's so that's yeah. that's badass, dude. Yeah. Like I'm like envious of you right yeah. now. That's yeah. incredible. That, yeah, that, that was that was pretty insane. Um, it, it was kind of crazy how that all happened. I went up and it was the Let's Fest, Let's Comedy in Fort Wayne. Um, they have this festival every year. And yeah, Fort Wayne's another another town, kind of like. They're, I feel like they're trying to uh, outgrow their their size, basically. Like, yeah, they. I lived there for about three years. I didn't so do sorry. I didn't do shit in the like nightlife ba- barely. Yeah, I think I went to like a couple of different like flashback bars and a couple of places that were a good time. But like I said, I, I was so busy working on the weekends that I didn't really get out a whole lot. And we didn't have any friends up there, so it was like. Eh. And I'm no offense to Fort Wayne people, but I'm sure. not a big fan of most of them. Most yeah. of them are assholes. Like I lived there for a year and or three years, and um, so you t- fit right in. It took me, <laughs> yeah. It took me. <laughs> it took me uh, a year and a half to become a regular at the bar that I went to almost every weekend because it was right down the street from my house. I could walk to it. it. Took me a year and a half to be a regular there. Like I would go in and be like, "Hey, how's it going? Like I, you know, I remember your name and blah blah blah." Yeah. What do you want? And I'm like, uh, give me a Miller Light, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just gonna fuck. I'll just, go, I'll just yeah. go hang out. Just so you know, every time you don't recognize me, money's coming off exactly. your tip. Exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, that they, they have this festival up there, and uh, um, I, I actually saw Kill Tony. They've been they'd been promoting it for a long time, and I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna go up there, and and so I bought two tickets for me and a buddy, and uh, um, I got a message after I bought my tickets. I got a message from the festival organizer, um, just saying, hey, you know, if you're interested, I'd love to upgrade your Kill. Tony tickets to full festival passes. I'm nice. Like, I'm like, all right, deal. So we showed up early. There was a show before this, which was kind of cool. It was like a, it was a stand up slash variety show. So like there were eight comics. Everyone did four minutes, but during each set there was a different game you had to play. Oh, nice. So before you did your set, you walked up and popped a balloon, and whatever game was in that balloon, you had to do that during oh, your nice. set. One of them was, uh, um, you had to draw during your set. You had to do your material while drawing, and then you had to get someone to guess who in the audience you drew. It was kind of like guess who, but you're like guess who meets oh, wow. Pictionary, and but you're doing your set the whole time. But yeah. th- the comics were really good about making it hilarious. Right. One one guy had uh, he was like a uh, human ski ball, so he he was there doing his set right in the middle of the stage, and uh, um, three people from both. Uh, left and right of the stage and the front had uh, these plastic balls that they were like throwing on the ground to like ramp up and hit them so he just has these balls flying everywhere. It was pretty funny. Yeah. Well, uh, somebody, I was listening to a podcast recently and somebody said they had a, a show that um, the there would be a secret word picked so like the comic wouldn't know what the secret word was, but the the crowd would know what the secret word was. Oh, and every shit. time the comic said the secret word, the crowd was supposed to take a drink of their beer or whatever drink they had. So then as the comic's doing a show or doing a stand up <clears throat> and he starts to notice you know, some comics are nice about it. And yeah. The way this guy was explaining, he was like, some comics are nice about it, but then others would like see and be like, oh, we're getting you motherfuckers drunk. <laughs> yeah. And would just keep saying this, like the word in like yeah. joke form. And it was just, I think that that's a very cool idea. Something, oh, for sure. something that I don't think you would be like ripping somebody off if you yeah. ever tried something like that. It's yeah. just something that I think is a yeah, cool idea. Yeah, for sure. That, that, that'd be hilarious. Um, the best game on that show was the very last one where they played the karaoke track to uh, um, Little Pink House 
Houses by uh, <laughs> uh, John Mellencamp. And so there were no lyrics during the verses, but when the chorus came up, uh, the crowd was supposed to start singing. <laughs> so, like, she'd be in the middle of a joke, and then it, oh, but ain't that America? <laughs> the whole crowd would do it. And they did it during the entire song. It was That's hilarious. Great. It was hilarious. So, so one of the questions I have, though, right away from doing that, that stand up set where it's only 60 seconds, but you did it in front of 200 people. You did yeah. it in front of people that you watch on a regular and that they you admire respect very, very and much. Yeah, yeah. Um, but what, does it create a tell me how much confidence that creates in you though for when you go on to future endeavors future stand up moments spots everything like that well I mean um, you know it's it's definitely I, I think it would have been different based on how it went mm-hmm. obviously um, had, had I just gone up there and just you know ate a dick and just right. had you know nothing good to say at all then I think it probably would have been a confidence killer yeah. but um, the fact that I did moderately well um, and got laughs when I was supposed to get la- laughs and I even got some visceral groans when I did the, yeah. when, oh, I, yeah. when I mentioned like <laughs> well, I, as soon as you're building it that joke is such a great joke because as you're building it you see where it's going and Yeah, you, so, it. so it makes yeah. it easy for the audience to yeah. do that and to laugh at the end yeah yeah P- people anticipated the punchline before I said it and that that's what you know. That told, That's a good joke. That, that told me in my head. I'm like, okay, so I've got this joke in a decent structure. When people can kind of anticipate where it's going, and right. then you just drop the hammer, um, and because uh, you're you know, almost like leading them, it's almost like leading yeah. the uh, the calf to slaughter at one sure. point. You know? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. where you freeze it right there, you can just see the look on Tony and Andy's face. Yeah, like, they're right laughing. Then they're like, yeah, yeah. Kill it. So you've got you've got something going, obviously. Yeah, no, it, it was it was cool, man. I uh, um, had a wonderful time. Um, I talked to everyone after the show, um, and uh, um, they're all super cool guys. Um, uh, Red Band obviously is is the Podfather, um, or one of them anyway. Um, and uh, you know, Tony gave me some you know nice words of uh, encouragement, and um, uh, you know. That in and of itself was a confidence booster to hear. You so know. you got to talk to him after after the show as well. So what what uh, what kind of conversations you guys have there? Are you allowed to share them? Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they weren't you know anything extensive. I didn't want to take up too much of his time because right after that, all of them did stand up. Oh, okay. um, that that was kind of the whole thing is they all do. They're all coming to do uh, kill Tony, and then they all did stand up. So um, Joel, Jeremiah, uh, Red Band, and Tony all did stand up afterwards. <laughs> so I didn't want to talk to him too awful much. Um, and hold him up but uh um yeah he was just like hey man thanks for coming up being prepared like he it's it's amazing how many people uh show up and and don't expect to get called and they're like man i've been doing comedy for five years but i got wasted and now my like i can't deliver my material and stuff and 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 he the one thing he emphasizes on the show is if you're going to sign up be ready to go up especially if you want to try and do well and that's the approach that i took to it something that's awesome is uh nicholas wayne oaks just commented on the facebook live and said kyle is the don king of comedy so (laughs) (laughs) i don't know what that that means if that's a if that's a positive or negative does that just mean i have like shitty hair like (laughs) or no or or does that mean that you are uh, taking advantage of all of your celebrities that you you manage (laughs) yeah I'm I'm, I'm exploiting every single one of them Um, but uh, uh, yeah no I um had, yeah, it was a huge confidence booster because, first of all, it was the biggest crowd I'd ever done comedy in front Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, even if you would have done poorly, yeah. you know now that you've gone up in front of 200 people and you've sure. made people laugh. So, yeah. yeah. You should be able to do that in a room, yeah, of, no, I, room of 40, right? Yeah, for sure. But that's the crazy thing about comedy, though, is it's so subjective. And it's all about, you know, you can be in front of 200 people ready to laugh or you can be in front of 15 people that are just pissed off. Yeah. And the same jokes that make 200 people laugh will just... Fall flat. fall flat yeah in front of those people so so what would you say i mean i'm gonna get to johnny on this too but what would you say we've talked about this on the podcast before but in case i feel like our show has been growing so we're getting a lot of new listeners that haven't really listened to all of the other episodes so first of all go back and go through the library and listen to them all i mean not all of them are great but the ones that kyle have been on have been great um Shit, so man. what what are your i'll uh, give you that 50 here in a minute yeah, yeah. <laughs> what is your what is your uh, the people that you've looked up to stand-up comedy wise like I, I think we've already talked about it but yeah i want to know and i want them to know sure um i mean in the past i 
I honestly, um, th- there's really no one in stand up comedy that I that I don't find value in at all at at least a little bit. But as far as people that jump out to me as you know someone who's like been inspirational or or made me want to get better um i mean i don't think anyone's written or delivered jokes better than mitch hedberg in the last 20 years his is just perfect yeah um like, it's, it, and you know what's coming yeah and you laugh every regardless sure time. yeah yeah absolutely. sometimes you don't know what's coming at least in my opinion like sometimes yeah. he says stuff i'm like yeah man i did well, not I, even i, mean, I didn't even put yeah. those two together you know yeah he, and he's got so many jokes that i would consider some of my favorite jokes of all time um <laughs> Um, and you know my original the the thing that started me um, really loving stand up comedy was uh, some of those old Steve Martin records right Um, because he was like the first absurdist like I had no idea what an, what an absurdist was but well, now break that down because I don't know what that is so yeah. it, it, essentially um, an absurdist is is you know just what it is it, it's absurd it's it's not really following any storytelling structure it's right. really not following um uh any type of you know it, it's all over the place it can be completely random you know he'll pull out a banjo but then he'll be wearing a hat that's like the arrow through the head thing yeah. and, and he'll just be up there being goofy as hell and he'll just tell these insane jokes or he'll start a joke and then not finish it <laughs> and you know just it, it's 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 randomized you know it's Family Guy before Family Guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was Ramblin' Guy. Uh, but yeah, no. Um, and you know, Dane Cook was was he was formative for me. Like yeah, I know that, that sure. I know that a lot of stand up comedians call him out for not being that funny, but. Man, when he hit the vicious circle, and, yeah, and I just the, like, the re- he, revelation was amazing. Yeah, yeah. like Dane Cook knew his crowd yeah you can't blame him for that no exactly yeah. and like, so so then uh johnny and i actually talked about this the other day because johnny is a very big student of comedy he loves watching it yeah and awesome. he's somebody i think who should try it i just need to get him over the uh, fear of trying <laughs> it um but the 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 thing we were talking about the other day is somebody that i find extremely hilarious in almost every aspect of the thing that they do except for their stand-up is not as funny as the rest of their life chris D'Elia. Chris yeah. Yeah. is like his stand up is good, makes me laugh, but his like posts on Instagram, Twitter, like things that yeah. he does, his podcast, oh, yeah. that stuff. So, like, I'm trying to figure out, like, is he just a better, just funny, natural person yeah. than he is a stand up comic? He's a great writer. Oh, Yo, like, yeah. The guy can craft a joke. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and he, like you said, he's just a funny individual. Yeah. Like, some it's of, just perspective on stuff. Yeah. Some, it's the exact same perspective I have, but I just can't put it into words. The oh, way he absolutely. Does. Like, I, it, I can get into some of his, some of his podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I think it's called Congratulations. Yeah. Um, like, I've listened to a few episodes of that and I enjoy it, but I really love his interactions with other people. Right. So when he's on, like, The Fighter and the Kid, mm-hmm. like, that's some of my favorite shit ever. He and Brian Callen interactions together <laughs> yes. you can't you can't beat it and they just like talk shit to each other the whole time and uh, he actually just guest hosted I think like this week yeah I saw it and, he like posted um, an Instagram post where he slapped Brian Kelly yeah, in the face like yeah, a couple of times yeah yeah it, it, it's <laughs> hilarious and he has these really funny little uh, these little sayings that he does and he would and, probably roast me for even saying anything oh, about him being oh, good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean he, he roasted him and them yeah you know what oh, I mean that was that, the that best video <laughs> yeah that so was so the boys watch getting the boys watch getting the boys <laughs> it was a All right, we're looking that yeah. up. We're looking yeah. that up because it's uh, so funny and uh, it's so on point. Yeah. Like, and man, the cool thing about Chris D'Elia is like, he really is that guy that doesn't do what he doesn't want to do. He he really is. He doesn't do drugs. He doesn't drink because he knows he has an addictive personality. And he's like, if I try it, I'm gonna like it, and I'm gonna want to do it all the time. And that's the yeah. End he's of not me. wrong on yeah. any of that. Yeah. Um, but this is Christy <laughs> Leah's uh, does Eminem impression. Oh God damn it! This computer. I don't know how to do it. All right, we're good. Ah. Uh. See, this is this is why I need a producer. Like, I need a, a Jamie or whatever. <laughs> Just uh, you know, write the numbers down and slide it to me after the podcast, and we'll talk about it. Nope, we're gonna start that the over. In- of course, I'm on torn. I'm driving a Porsche over the floorboards over the. F- Four points, while you're in the four tours, getting an abortion and a divorce at the same time. They hear it's the Ford and 
<laughs> Jamie. <laughs> Dan, 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 right I'm panning. I'm doing all this while you're panicking. And you're looking and staring at mannequins. And I'm going to fanikins trying to get up a planikins. All of the planikins, Danikin, fan, fan, panikins. Four points. Where you're in the cabana and the cabana. I'm in a cabana and the I'm in a cabana and the Janet. I'm in a cabana chanting on the stand up banner. Well, you don't got the stamina, you're lacking the stamina. <laughs> you're lacking the stamina while you're divorcing Harrison Ford, and I'm in a Porsche and the flowing ports while I'm on torrent. You're using way too many napkins. Papkins. Lapkins and chapkins. You're using chapstick and napkins while I'm papkin. Flapping around like a papkin. <laughs> Flamming a babbit, a pan, a champkin. Damn it, a can of That's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you know who I had just discovered? Uh, not just discovered. Like I always knew the guy was funny, but like uh, Bobby Lee. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't like. <laughs> he's he's strange. But, yeah, uh, I I'm a huge fan of the culinary arts as well. Yeah. So uh, Bert Crusher's podcast, yes. Something's Burning. Yes, the episode with him, De- uh, him and Delia. Yeah, him, Delia, and Bobby Lee. God, like, that's probably a, it's like a it was incredible. Oh, recipe hysterical. for disaster. Get that? <laughs> yeah. Fun? All right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it was. <laughs> yeah, um, I've got a Bobby Lee story for you. Um, I went to the comedy. You, store in yes, oh, 2012. I about this. Yes, I went to you the comedy store this. in 2000. 2012, and uh, these are during what they call the dead years. So if you ever hear Callan, like th- this is while Rogan was banned from the comedy store, uh, yeah. which was which was I think 07 to 14. An insane thing to think that he was banned from there. Yeah, I don't think Mitzi played a like. She's the one that banned him, right? Or no, no, actually, she didn't have no. But Mitzi, Mitzi didn't have any role in That's banning right. him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, uh, she was the only one that was like in Rogan's corner. But at that time, um, I can't remember who was the showrunners who was running the shows there. But because of how big Carlos Mencia was, and the fact that they would rather have kept Mencia doing shows there and bringing people in. And, uh, uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, you, you can go like look up Rogan's story on it, but him tell it, but yeah, essentially someone just said, Hey, you can't come back. And he's like, all right, I'm going to go do comedy literally. Yeah, and, he, and he called out, Carlos, is, is it because he called out Messiah yeah. because of yeah, that, that, that big roast of like Joe Rogan calling him out. I was like, and yeah, he, he had every comedian in the fucking world standing up and giving him a, yeah, a standing oh, for ovation sure for that one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, I, I went to the comedy store in 2012. I was in LA for just, um, you know, tourist reasons, just traveling. Um, and I was like, you know, I'm going to go to the comedy store and I'm going to see a show. The only show was available that night was a show called the C word. And it was all females. Um, and it was in the belly room. Um, and, uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it was in the belly room, which is the same stage that he went off on Mencia. Right. So that room in that video, that was where the show was at, that, that I went to go see. And um, I paid five bucks to get in. I was one of seven people in that room. That's oh, fucking shit. crazy. I was one of seven people in that room, which surprised the fuck out of me. I'm like, why is this place not packed? Anyway, so the show was funny. It was cool and everything. And so I go down, I go outside and I'm, I'm waiting for a taxi and, uh, to take me back to the hotel and I look over and there's Bobby Lee and, uh, he's with a black guy that I have no idea who he is. Never didn't recognize him. Didn't know if he was a comic or whatever, but this was back when Bobby Lee was not sober. Right. Bobby Lee was, was very much, <laughs> was very much fucked up. And, uh, and he walks up to me and, and he goes, uh, no, actually I, I walked up to him and said, Hey man, I'm a huge fan. I love mad TV and, and your stand up and stuff. He goes, Oh, thanks man. You know how like Bobby Lee does. I'm going to suck your dick. <laughs> oh wait, and, well, just wait. <laughs> he, he, uh, and so I, I asked for like a picture for Facebook or whatever and he obliged. Um, and so I'm just standing there for a second and I'm like getting ready to walk away and he goes, Hey, you ever fucked a black guy? <laughs> I'm like, uh, no. He says, do you want to? <laughs> Apparently he was referring to the guy next to him, but I was like, was it Chappelle? <laughs> like, is it rock? Like, who, who are we talking who about? Who are we here? talking about right yeah. now? Uh, um, Cause I do have a line. Uh, <laughs> no, um, but yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But Bobby Lee propositioned me for, uh, for sex with, with, with a black gentleman. So crazy. Um, unfortunately I, I, uh, well not unfortunately. Why am I saying unfortunately? <laughs> well, I mean, how was it? Uh, <laughs> I hope it was good for that guy. Uh, it was good for that guy. I got yeah. mine though. Yeah. I got, I, yeah. So, so does that mean I got me too? I don't know. I don't know. 
I have no idea. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, that that was my one Bobby Lee run in. I think I still have the picture somewhere. But. That's awesome. Uh, so like, I mean, we've we talked a lot about comedy, but like the the rest of the stuff going on in the world, there's been a lot of like weird, like crazy stuff that's happened with some of the people that we've, at least I've been a fan of. Mac Miller's has gone too soon, man. Uh, overdosed over the week. It was was it? They found him on Friday. Was it Friday? I think it was. Not sure. Let me look this up. But uh, but anyways, like he's somebody that. Once again, a lot of musicians and people that um, that I've been introduced to uh, are through friends and through hanging out with people, partying and having a good time. So then whenever I listen to that music, it gets me into that mo- mood again. And yeah. I'm like, oh, man, this is the best part of music and, and media and stand up and stuff like that in general, just because it takes me back to that time that I was listening to it the first time. And for him to, to be gone that quickly is just is a crazy thing. The thing that I also hate is we just pulled up that video, the Donald Trump video. It's got 184 million, I think 108, yeah, 100 or 148 million views. So obviously he was a big deal and he was a great musician, whatever. And but the news article saying Ariana Grande's ex, like you know, killed himself. Like, and I don't yeah. like that Lord that Lord. headline because yeah. to me, it doesn't matter if he was you know with Ariana. I don't. To me, I don't even know who the fuck Ariana Grande is. Like, I mean, I'm sure I know I some either. of her songs. <laughs> I don't either. But, like, I don't really, like, I don't care who that is. And so I just feel like that's kind of I just got like one a, of those from Taco Bell like, the other from, day. From what I understand. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I understand she's a hog tamer. That's that's all I know. <laughs> yeah, she's. Uh, that was a big yeah. thing. Too. Yeah. She's but, walking uh, from side to side. Pete <laughs> Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> So basically, Mac Miller, though, there's some like great songs. The the Donald Trump one, I, I still hold strong that that's a really great song, even though he may regret it now that Donald Trump is president. But uh, th- they said that the 26-year-old rapper known for his canny wordplay and artistic reinvention died Friday. It was Friday. At his Los Angeles home, the apparent cause of death was a drug overdose. So you guys, as Juice in the Morning fans, know that I'm a conspiracy theorist. I saw a. That's where I was kind of going with this. I saw this, a yeah. very, very crazy conspiracy theory on Twitter right after this whole thing went down. Mac Miller was uh, trying to bring to the forefront through tweets and just like some stuff he would say in the public about the Hollywood child sex ring and the fact that he he just started becoming more sober, more you know coherent. T- telling these things trying to bring it out like that this is like a crazy thing that happens in Hollywood yeah. and then all of a sudden he's uh, dead from a drug overdose something that he was supposedly battling and getting getting away from yeah. so that's a that's a conspiracy theory right there like yeah. what, are, what are your thoughts what do you guys think I've got nothing okay <laughs> <laughs> allow me to indulge uh, <laughs> no I, I I did not hear about him saying that stuff but it does not surprise me um, I think that um I'm going to go ahead and say this publicly on your podcast that uh, I have no intentions of committing any type of suicide. So if I come up dead (laughs) after anything I say, um, please uh, look into foul play. Uh, um, But uh, man, there's some insane shit uh, in regards to um, child sex trafficking and um, pedophilia and uh, drug uh, sex trafficking human trafficking is f- grosses more money each year than arms trafficking and drug trafficking combined and it's insane because it's something we don't ever hear about yeah, yeah. Never hear about it. Yeah, I think it's what eighty thousand children go missing uh, every year across the world and are never heard from again. Haunting videos on YouTube of people yeah. like st- snatching kids. Dude, yeah. it sucks because I'm running out of space in my basement. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you definitely um, don't want them to show yeah. up at your house, by the way. But yeah, it's uh, it, this sort of thing. This sort of theme seems to pop up. Um, more than, and it's probably a conspiracy. He probably could have had just a rough, rough night. Sure, yeah, 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 yeah. Didn't and measure out yeah. the drugs correctly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, someone like, um, you know, someone like Mac Miller. I mean, he seems like he's got it together, like a little bit more. Um, at least from what I saw, like, you know. <sighs> Like w- the problem uh, is, is we only see people in the public eye. That's we true. We don't. We don't know. Him that's personally. true. So, so supposedly he, um, he dated Ariana Grande, and um, uh, how long has it been since they broke up? Like, uh, th- th- do we know that? Let me look. Let me look it up. 
Yeah. I think it's been about 10 inches ago since they broke up. Uh, <laughs> weeks ago since they broke up. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, please. Pete Davidson sitting on at least a foot. <laughs> sitting on at least foot. a foot. That big, tall, lanky mother. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it was this year. July 23rd is when he went on. Uh, oh, shit. ET, e Online or ET Online. What is it? The button that I'm clicking that drags it down like a foot. I don't know what the. Well, speaking of foot, uh, <laughs> Pete Davidson, um, he went full Marshall Matters with his hair too. He, he went full yeah. some shady there. And also, oh, no. uh, uh, Mac Miller, Eminem, Marshall Matters. You know, that's a oh, very. Oh, we got ads. Uh, yeah, I'm Christ. totally bringing up something that has nothing to do with this. I'm just like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, at least he got out of here before Eminem could roast him. Um, not that he would. I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't I, know, man. The, the... I, I, I don't know enough about the about the modern rap game. Yeah, me um, neither. But I, I feel like, uh, yeah, he was arrested on a charge of DUI in May shortly after their breakup, which led Grande to clap back at a fan who blamed her for it. Yeah. That's the other thing. Don't blame her for his death. Either. Yeah. That's stupid. Yeah. Like, even though I hate her and the, the headlines that say Ariana Grande's ex-boyfriend took yeah. his own life, yeah. still don't blame her for that. It's, That's fucking stupid. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, get, do, do we have copies of his tweets? Can we see those? Like, what he was saying? Uh, let me see. It might just be something that I saw and then I fucking fabricated it. <laughs> <laughs> because if he called out the Clintons or anything, then there's your there's your shit right there. Um, but uh, sometimes when you talk about Hillary, oh, people murder themselves. <laughs> they suicide. <laughs> <laughs> people are just like, okay, I've said what I need to say. Um, yeah. So I think this is maybe something here. But get, getting back to that point, man, there's so much insanity, and even just the stuff that's been popping up here locally with the with the local archdiocese, um, you know, coming out saying that you know priests have been covering up regular you know sexual abuse for years. You well, know that's I mean? that's the other thing. Like, um, what is it? Somebody somebody uh, posted recently. Oh yeah, we're gonna get all upset about all of the stuff going on in the world, but uh, nobody has like the, the the fact that the Catholic priests have been like performing things acts of pedophilia for hundreds yeah. of years, and nobody bats an eye. It's like a, just a joke now. It's a, I think it's a joke on South right, Park. Right like it's a joke on South Park and other shows where you know, or just people, stand up comedians. Like it's such a joke now that yeah. it's almost like not even taken seriously. Sure, that, that that's been going on forever. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it, it's it's pretty. Pretty insane. Yeah, that's uh, we're we're getting a little dark with that. So yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna move I'm gonna move on to the next thing. Post Malone. Yeah, yeah, Post Malone uh, got in a car wreck weeks after uh, his plane almost crash landed because of the uh, landing gear. Is he facing a final destination situation, and we just need somebody to take his place? So, like, is he gonna like sacrifice one of his one of his click to the uh, the final destination curse so that goes around and like gives him a little f- few more years? I hope so because he's a fucking fascinating human being. <laughs> like, <laughs> <clears throat> well, they they just talked about him on the uh, the Smugcast show last weekend. I think, honestly, in my opinion. The Post Malone is a good artist. I think he has good music. Um, I think the the a lot of the stuff he's getting hated on for is that he's different from the rap game. Like a lot of these, like uh, what is it, Sirius XM shows with like Sway? Is that that is that? Oh, the guy, the, the guy that used to do all the X Games. Yeah. No, no, he no, didn't no, do no. the X Games. He was on. Uh, he was like the black guy on MTV. On MTV. Yeah. 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 So it's. I don't know if that's just him, but anyways, there is a like a there's a there's a satellite radio show and basically they were just calling him out for the fact that he has braids which one thing like why does your hair matter like I don't care about that like that doesn't matter to me black hair matters (laughs) (laughs) I think we should hashtag that and I don't know we might get in a lot of trouble because we're all white right here yeah yeah yeah. but but that's actually a really good point I like that that was funny Uh, funny. Um, but no and then they, they, they just call him out for like his um they, they, they didn't like I guess they don't like his music but I don't understand really why they don't like his music yeah. to me it's 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 entertaining and the guy is talented he the one thing that they did say that I did notice a little bit was um, the style and the person he portrays 
does look like it's completely fabricated. Like he's yeah. just been like, I'm going to be this. Oh, sure. So this is how I'm going to do it as yeah. opposed to like, that's actually him. I don't know if that makes sense. It- yeah, cause, uh, because like, he a lot was, of the videos they show of him, like when he's like fucked up and like when you're fucked up, you're your true self. Like, yeah. If you're drunk, you know, and they yeah. got videos of him. Like, I think that's just who he is. You're right. You know, yeah. like, well, it's just chain so, smoking and drinking Bud Light. That's, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's I think that's just who he is. And yeah. what I like about him is when you listen to rap nowadays, one, you can understand what he's saying. He's not, yeah. you know, when he's rapping, yeah. which is like all I hear. Or he's yeah. just not just like repeating the same mm-hmm. three words for sure for four and a half minutes. Um, and so like, I feel like something happened in the Malone that now that he's post Malone, <laughs> All of a sudden, you know, he's get he's doubled down on it. He's yeah. got you know the face tattoos. Face like, tattoos are getting face crazy. Face tattoos is commitment. Yeah, like like you know you you can wear arm sleeves to cover up arm tattoos, whatever. But when you go face with it, yeah, there's no going back. You're doubling down. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? So doubling so, down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I whatever was like pre Malone. I'd be interested to see what was there. Well, and then also like you can tell he's a he's a talented musician because he does do like some covers of like um, some country singers and he's like playing yeah, playing like, an acoustic do, like, guitar. Bob Dylan and shit. Yeah. yeah. So like oh. the guy's a talent. He's just yeah. he's just weird and different. I've, have you heard the theory about Post Malone? Nope. I want to hear it. Uh, uh, the the theory about Post Malone is that his voice is literally the same tone as Justin Bieber's just uh just taken down an octave that's really weird um because some people have taken like uh some similar uh, melody lines from some post right. Malone songs and some Justin Bieber songs played them side by side and at the same octave level mm. and they sound almost identical it's pretty and insane. they're and they're buddies yeah there there's actually a bet on my bookie who is going to be Justin Bieber's uh best man in his wedding Ooh. Oh shit! It's a long play, obviously, because I don't know if he's getting married anytime soon. But uh, yeah. sure. <laughs> well, didn't he? Uh, uh, God damn it! I feel so shitty for knowing this. <laughs> uh, uh, but I love uh, that. That yeah, preface. Yeah, a, a lady, <laughs> uh, uh, a lady that I work with told me um, <laughs> that uh, he just uh, proposed one of the. Um, Baldwin's. So then that makes more sense. Yeah, Haley, yeah. Haley Baldwin. Yes. See, I'm saying yeah, that see, I know that. He actually knew the name. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Not just me. Hey, I um, call it research for I'm, the podcast. I'm, I'm right. <laughs> for me, it's just shit that I really shouldn't care about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no that that was one of the theories about Post Malone. But man, I man, I. I don't know. D- do your thing. Um, well, BJ you know. from the Smugcast did tweet me back because I was tweeting him during the episode, and he was like, "Obviously, they insert the uh, standard juice joke where they make fun of me for liking something that's popular, and uh, <laughs> then they, <laughs> and then they, then they posted." But then BJ said, "Yes, he is a uh, he is a marketing genius." Like he tweeted me that, and I was like, "That's completely true." The yeah. whole the whole Bud Light shows where he would do like uh, pop up shows, yeah, like that's a fucking great ad campaign. And oh, for sure. And to hitch yourself to a wagon like Bud Light, if you become popular, they're going to pay you too. Yeah, and he's got a refrigerator that for the rest of his life in his house, they will never not have every Bud Light. day. Yeah. So that being said, Miller Light is great. <laughs> I say that. About, I say that. I say that about Miller Light, and I also say that about Monster. So if Monster ever wants to be a sponsor of the podcast, just reach out, man. Oh, we just got to get. We got to get. Circle grow K a Coffee, bit. free gas for life. Your best yeah. coffee in the world. <laughs> Johnny's going to be my sponsor guy from here on out. Um, but he, he's just going to use whatever products. So like he, at all times, he's going to have a. Miller White a fucking <laughs> coffee and a monster just be like I'm fucking jacked dude this combination and I, you know those Stoke um, energy shots that you put in your coffee yes. put like seven of those in here they I don't put know energy shots in your coffee no I did I put oh. like seven of them and it says like please do not do more yeah. than one yeah and- so he's about to fly out of this room. He doesn't even know what drink he's reaching for. He's just like, yeah, just, where's my hand going to end up here? So, yeah, yeah. So, so speaking of, uh, you said that Nick Oaks was on here the last time that you were on here. Yeah. I actually went for my first jujitsu experience. Fuck so, yeah, man. So That's awesome. I, I went to um, IBJA. IBJJA in Greenwood and uh, met with a guy named Chris and he showed me a couple of things. One thing that I'm going to have to get over, I played football, I played basketball, I played golf, I play, I ran track. I never com- competed in any kind of combat situation sports like wrestling or any yeah. kind of thing like that. So the first thing that I'm going to have to get over is the man-on-man like 
contact. Like, yeah. It's it's something that oh, yeah. Pornhub will help you with that. Uh, <laughs> it shouldn't be weird, but it is weird. Yeah. It's weird at first. You know what's hilarious is as soon as you said that, he reached for the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> He's just like, oh yeah, let's, yeah, pull that up, Jamie. Yeah, sorry, but, but uh, yeah, no. How that, do I that, not get a boner while being choked out? <laughs> <laughs> because it doesn't help at home. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's legitimate though. It's yeah. it's it's just one of those things because the I I am. I feel like I learn stuff really quickly. I pick things up quickly, but also at the same time, when he was first showing me stuff, I'm trying to settle my like awkward feeling down to listen to what he's telling me to do. And then when he tells me to do it, it's like, I completely forgot. Like it's like the Ricky Bobby thing. Like, I don't know what to do with my hands. Yeah. And he's like, no, you put your hand here, you put your hand here and you like, you know, lean into this. Cause then it'll choke in like sure. this way. And I'm just like, dude, I I'm excited to do it. It's uh, I'm I've, at the IBJJA does 30 day free trial. So you can go to classes for 30 days without that's paying cool. anything. Yeah. Um, and he said, you know, that's where you kind of figure out the people that are interested in continuing to do it or the people that are just going to give, up because they oh, absolutely. they're not interested. They don't like yeah. it. It's different than what they thought it was going to be. And so I, I what I, what really stuck with me was um, I told him, I was like, you know, I don't really want to compete. I just kind of want to work out. I want to learn self-defense because, you know, I'm already a, a fairly confident person in public situations. I feel like I would just like feel even better if I knew that they're like whoever was messing with me, I could probably like choke them out or oh, break their sure. arm or break their leg yeah. or something like that. But then he said, you know, I want you to compete. We're going to push you to compete because that makes people train harder, makes people get interested in it more um, because they have an end goal that they're going for. Yeah. And then he brought up another point that stuck with me, which is um, the self-defense part. He was like, if a guy's fucking with me and, you know, I take him down and I get him into a, um, and, I thought you were getting ready to like go. Uh, no, just, uh, you know. It does get hot in here. I'm sorry. I need to get like a Dyson, like a uh, silent fan. But um, anyways, so he was like uh, talking about if somebody was messing with him, he got him down, broke his arm. He was like, you know, if the guy still wants to keep fighting me, he's going to have to try to hit me with one hand. And he was like, also it doubles my chances of breaking his other arm because sure. he doesn't have this arm. Yeah. And then he was like, so, you know, that, that the fight's going to end that way. And he was like, if, if I choke somebody out, if I choke him out, he was like, there's studies that have been done that getting choked out and then coming to, there's no brain damage like when you do MMA and somebody gets knocked out by yeah. forcefully hitting their, oh, hitting absolutely. their head. Yeah. He, was like, he was like, if I choke the guy out and he passes out and then I can walk away from the fight, I'm good. That guy's still going to be okay. He's just going to be coming out of being choked out. Yeah. Um, he's like, it's it's a good win-win for he's both gonna of us. He's going to be humbled. Yeah, um, yeah for sure. Um, and then he's like, the last part, real quick, last part, he's like, and then if the guy, you know, if I get him down, I break his leg, the most he's going to do is hobble at me. And once again, I have twice the chances of breaking his other leg oh, if absolutely. he still is trying to fight you, me. You know that this guy is a trained killer because he's like well if you break his leg he's gonna get up and hobble at you he's like dude if you broke my leg I'm <laughs> yeah I'm done I'm tapping son you, like, you, you, you won yeah <laughs> like, for sure and it's just crazy because Nick is one of those people that um Dude, were you like I feel like you're like reaching for stuff oh, I just, <laughs> just bugs no you're like, good yeah, you're but good like, yeah, uh, but, but no Nick is uh, Nick is a guy though that solidified my 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 thought process that people that do um, jujitsu and stuff like that have a different level of humbleness and just a mind on him that's different yeah. than other people that we talk to. Oh, for because sure. Because he's like one of three people that we've had on that do like martial arts or jujitsu or something yeah. like that. And every one of them like had a good, uh, a good mind. Yeah. And um, the, the guy that Ian Pomfret, the guy that did jujitsu and also does MMA, he's, uh, he's fought a lot at, in Kokomo which Kokomo is also trying to build a really big thing there in, in the MMA world. But anyways, he like challenged us on stuff that most people don't like challenge us on like, you know, like, you know, talking about certain situations. He's like, no, that's not the way it is. And yeah. it's like somebody that is, you know, in that, I feel like has that confidence to like a, a podcast is nothing. If somebody's trying to punch you in the face or, <laughs> or choke you out. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And you know, um, 
big shout out to uh, Nick um, and his wife Tiffany and their kids. They all they, they actually do jujitsu as a family, I know. which which is pretty incredible. Um, especially being that they have an 11 year old daughter, and if I ever had um, a young lady to take care of in my household, and there was one discipline that they learn in martial arts, I'd want it to be jujitsu. Yeah. Because if you're ever in a precarious situation on your back, you need to know how to choke a motherfucker with yeah. your legs. Um, you know, and uh, um, yeah, no, he he is um and just anyone in general i actually have uh several friends that um practice jujitsu regularly and um have uh trained in in fighting and in other types of combat and every single one of them have that kind of mind that you're talking about it's a it's it's a it's a there's a level of respect there um, not just for um, yourself but the people that you compete against and also um, a uh um, like, like you said, a, a level of confidence, but not ego. Right. Like that, that cause that's a very big distinction to make. There's yeah. a, that you can be confident with ego. You can be confident without ego and what martial arts teaches you is how to, to at least to a, to an extent kill that ego, at least in that moment. Um, because, you know, until you're on your back, you know, with a, um, you know, elbow being driven into your neck and you're slowly going to sleep, right? you know, um, uh, you know, you, you never really understand what it's like to face challenges until you're in that sort of right. position. So, you and know. what's, and what's crazy is like, you know, the guy that was showing me this stuff, he's, he, he's probably 40 pounds less than me, but like I knew when he was like doing the moves to me, there was nothing I would have been able to do to like get out of that. Like, oh yeah, you're, they you're would right. have. would have, like if you needed to, you could have killed me. So, well, <laughs> and crazy. you know when when guys do the moves to me, um, I try to find a way to you know. Sorry, that was supposed to be gay joke. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no, I, I, I didn't know exactly where I was going to go with it, so I was just like, I'm just going to start this and see where it goes. I didn't go anywhere. Well, I'm totally hard right now, too. <laughs> so did we... Did we? I thought it was my phone going off. I was like, what? Did we just talk about the Jersey Shore off the mic, or did we talk about it when we, we got We talked about mic? it off the mic. Okay, yeah. so the, the Jersey Shore is another thing that I've been watching uh, recently, and it's something that I want to I want to throw out there. We're gonna see these so, people when they're in a nursing home. Yeah, so so it's back is what you were saying. Yes. Like like it's not it's not like re- it's not just a spe- it's not new people. One. It's it's not same old. people new yep. new time. new stuff happening. Um, it's crazy because they all know that they're like super famous now. <laughs> so like whenever they go anywhere, it's like oh, I just want to be on the set just for a day or two just yeah. to see like how real is it? How real yeah. are these personalities? Are they actually the people they are, or are they you know? just being told to do stuff, how many plants get put in there of like people um, because of the guy that tried to fight or talk shit to Ronnie. And speaking of which, that guy has some very fucked up emotional issues. The guy's like either crying or freaking out or partying his ass off. So like, I mean, just wild levels of like. Yeah, I think while Daddy touched him, he was shooting steroids. In his <laughs> cheeks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's a very, very good oh, possibility. Man, that's, that's how he kept him still. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Yeah. Um, oh shit. But like, it just makes me wonder. Like, are we? Because they, I feel like it's uh, something that's happening a lot with our age group. Is they're bringing back things that uh, we used to enjoy and then like putting new spins on it because we are, I feel like known as the uh, generation of like nostalgia. So like anytime something's brought back, like fucking top guns about to come back and I'm like yeah. all in, like I'm fucking like, <laughs> let's go. I'm, I'm top guns. Uh, Henry Cavill is supposedly like in talks with Tom Cruise about being on it. Like oh, Superman. Shit. So like, oh man, I'm so excited. That's like, I'm just like, I'm just pumped. And he's a badass. We yeah. looked up, we looked up uh, Val Kilmer. He's not looking too good so <laughs> yeah i mean he, he's definitely looking better than he did there for yeah. a while we're wondering um, we're wondering if uh somebody's gonna overdub his voice because yeah. of like his throat cancer thing he had yeah. because he was just on instagram and shane like pulled up his instagram and was playing it on the podcast and i was like there's no way that that's like gonna work on the in the yeah. movie unless he just doesn't talk yeah he, yeah. he was ice man now he's icing man <laughs> yeah, uh, he's, he's, yeah. Oh. <laughs> feel bad for that guy. Yeah. yeah I was watching yeah. The Walking Dead the other day and then I realized it was just Val Kilmer. And it, was, <laughs> <laughs> it was just Val Kilmer's Instagram. It was really yeah. weird. I was on Netflix. Yeah. It's like, oh, He's shit. like the most common customer in Breaking Bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so so what are, what are some other nostalgia type things 
that you guys would like to see come back? And then what are some that definitely don't need to come back? First, first one on my list. I'm 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 worried about this uh, Ryan Reynolds Thundercats thing. Have you heard about that? Oh, what? No. Yeah. So they're talking about bringing back Thundercats, uh, Ryan Reynolds live action, and they're shooting in Australia or something that like that right now. So. Interesting. Uh, first thing I'd love to see come back: Celebrity Deathmatch. Oh, oh, dude, wow, that's perfect, yeah. dude. Well, he wins. <laughs> <laughs> I was just well, gonna say bring Topanga back, but now I, dude. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I used to carry around a picture of fucking Topanga in my wallet just because I didn't have an ID to put in the picture section. Okay. And so, so I was just like, what can I put in here? So I just put in a picture of Topanga. How many I, holes did it have in it? <laughs> I'm just... <laughs> oh, She's man. so hot, though. Yeah. 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 That, man, fucking... That was... That show, like, shaped my childhood. I feel like I was raised by Mr. Feeny. <laughs> like, you I shaped I mean? my childhood to yeah. that show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the... Uh, the whole Thundercats thing is supposedly not happening. So never mind. Uh, I was just citing a rumor that I had seen on on the internet. Basically, Ryan Reynolds said no, um, but he said, uh, I don't understand Six Underground is an insane action film set in an amazing locales like Florence, Abu Dhabi, and Thundera. Reynolds wrote on Twitter invoking the home world of the Thunderians and the Thundercats. This is the most ridiculous rumor yet. Reynolds' tweet followed a simple no by screenwriter Rhett Reese denying the rumors the film he penned with Zombieland and Deadpool 2 writing partner is actually a live action Thundercats. So basically, it, it, it still could be a thing. Yeah. I don't think that they're completely saying no. Um, I mean, but anyways, it's it's a it's a movie called uh, Six Underground and it's, um, it's literally the... <clears throat> highest budget that Netflix has put into making a film yet. So interesting. So they're putting in a huge wow. budget to to create a film that was um, written by the guys that wrote Zombieland and Deadpool 2. That's crazy. So wow. I think it'll be a good one. Another sad, sad death, Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Oh, man, all of our grandmas wanted to fuck that guy. <laughs> you know? Like, there's some, like... <laughs> oh, man. man, yeah. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, Burt... <laughs> Yeah, he, fucking Burt Reynolds. That was a good man. one. That was a good one. Yeah, um, man, Turd Ferguson bit it, dude. Um, <laughs> is it is it bad that my favorite Burt Reynolds memory was actually that was was Norm Macdonald doing Burt Reynolds? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but, on Saturday Night Live. But, <laughs> Burt Reynolds is one of those guys that just never came across my radar. Like, I'm he, he's an incredible talent. Like, he did. I, I love Deliverance. Um, he one, came across my radar because of Archer, because Archer is a huge fan of Burt oh, Reynolds. Yeah, Archer, yeah, yeah. And, and then I started looking up the movies and I like watched a couple of them. I'm like, all right, yeah. it's okay. Yeah, Smoking yeah. the Bandit, classic. Um, you know, Deliverance, classic. Uh, the Longest Yard. Oh, okay. So while you're naming these, keep talking. But yeah. I'm going to look up the. Uh, there's a very uh, surprising uh, list of movies that Burt Reynolds turned down. Yeah. Acting, oh, acting he, I, I know one of them. Uh, fucking Han Solo. Yep. He t- he turned down Han Solo. That would have um, been weird. Yeah, it would have been very weird. Yeah. I agree. Um, uh, but yeah, no. Let's see. What else um, did I enjoy Burt Reynolds in? Um, I'm trying to think of some actresses' names that were that old. But uh, Burt Reynolds turned down being James Bond. Oh wow. shit! Um, like like he would have like Sean been- Connery. Like what was it the, says it? one of Reynolds' biggest regrets was not playing James Bond. His excuse that the public wouldn't accept him as an American playing 007. Uh, and he said as much to producer Cubby Broccoli, who offered him the role after Sean Connery retired. Oh, that would have been tremendous. And also, who doesn't want to work with a guy named Cubby Broccoli? Right. Michael Corleone in The Godfather. Oh, shit. So Reynolds, Reynolds also turned down the role of Michael Corleone in The Godfather, but this is one he didn't regret. In an interview with Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live, he acknowledged the rumor that Marlon Brando threatened to quit if Reynolds came on board. I was flattered that he was upset, he said. Han Solo in Star Wars, which he already said. Richard Gere in Pretty Woman. I think that's a good one. I think that's an interesting one, because actually, even though people may think that Pretty Woman is a chick flick, I'm a big fan of Pretty Woman. It's a good movie. Just saying. I'm not surprised. Richard Gere is a stud. Yeah, he is. <clears throat> Jack Nicholson's role in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. I, mm, mm. I don't know. I think Nicholson did. Oh, yeah. 
Bruce Willis's role in Die Hard and Jack Nicholas's really? role in Terms of Endearment. Huh. What? Interesting. Although Reynolds told Cohen that he doesn't remember turning down either role, it still stands as <laughs> often repeated Hollywood rumor. He said you can't go back. He told the Sydney Morning Herald. Uh, so those like are, those might just be rumors. Well, then. Go, go back real quick. There's a quote right here that is amazing. Talk about Jack Nicholson. He says you can't out drink Jack and you can't out smoke him either. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah, that's hilarious. That's a really good quote. I'm gonna yeah. save that. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I think that's I think that's about it. But yeah. the thing that I also liked him a lot in was Boogie Nights. Yes. He hated the fact that he was in it. Yeah, he always hated the fact that he was in Boogie Nights. Yeah, and, and that was probably one it of his more popular porn, roles. Yeah, because it glorified the porn industry. Um, but yeah, that's just a sad thing, man. I mean, it's a uh, it's a rough rough uh, few weeks for for some celebrities out there. Yeah. So okay, so so there's the three, right? Aretha. Yep. Aretha, um, Aretha Burt, and Mac. Yep. Was that the three? So we'll just wait a little while, and there'll be another three. Is that the way it's, that works? It's crazy. It does always seem to happen in threes. Yeah. Uh, Illuminati was, dog. There was one thing that. Uh, Somebody posted on Twitter that I had to save and I had to bring up on the podcast. In the past 24 hours, Mac Miller dies of an overdose. Cardi B goes apeshit on Nicki Minaj at the New York Fashion Week. Mary J. Blige and Faith Evans fight at P. Diddy's New York Fashion Week party. Post Malone gets in a car wreck. George Zimmerman threatens Beyonce. It's a really busy 24 hours. That's a dope episode of Celebrity Deathmatch. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Callback. Perfect. Yeah. Let's do you it. have a three-way fight between Aretha, Burt, and Mac. Yep, to see God. who actually stays dead. I'm getting cold uh, chills Aretha. actually thinking yeah. about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, bring that back, world. Whoever, I don't know if we need to talk to Netflix. Netflix, do this shit. Yeah. You, you're not bound by any network. Do this shit. And I'm sure whoever created that is like looking for the money because oh, yeah. I don't know if they actually went on to create anything else. Yeah, well, who and knows? Keep it, the only stipulation is you have to keep it claymation. Oh yeah, absolutely. Don't, don't go any of this Family Guy computer generated. No. Oh, yeah. Illustration. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Strictly claymation. Has sure. to be. For sure. So before we get out of here, we're at an hour. What do we got? You've got, I didn't even bring it up. Oh. Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Horst uh, is coming is coming to feature for you guys. They're coming yeah. to headline, headline for us. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not feature. Feature to me thinks like, I feel yeah. like it's like There's the, so many odd terms yeah. here. Feature, headline, guest spot, whatever. Right. Um, but yeah, no, uh, Jeff Horst, um, one of the top young rising comedians in the world, um, uh, has been featured by Kevin Hart twice um, on Comedy Central. Um, he just had uh, his episode of... Um, um, Kevin Hart's Next Level right. um, just uh, aired a couple of weeks ago. Hilarious. Go check that out. ComedyCentral.com. Um, you can also find a video that uh, Kyle posted on his Facebook yeah. and the Kettle Top Brewhouse yep. Facebook. Absolutely. Where you can kind of see a little bit of a uh, glimpse at his comedy. Yeah. He's funny. Yeah, and, and that's actually a uh, a clip from that 30-minute special that he did. Right. Um, so, yeah, that's available for free um, at ComedyCentral.com. 30-minute um, special. Very, very funny. Um, yeah, he's going to be in town this coming Friday, the 14th. Um, tickets are just $15 general admission $20 VIP and uh, we're in the process of working out a deal on tickets if you um, get a steak dinner right uh, nice. and, and they uh, the uh, kettle top brew house and eatery um, amazing food yes it, it exclusively serves steaks on comedy night and they're not just they're not just steaks tossed on the grill um, uh, Dave Hiles uh, one of the one of the co-owners of creatures of habit brewing and and um, runs a kitchen out there is an amazing uh, um, smoke artist and, and grill aficionado and he makes some of the most delicious steaks I've ever had um, so uh, come on out for that um, uh, tickets are available online at eventbrite.com um, or you can uh, just try to get them at the door I wouldn't count on that because, right. because there's limited what, seating yes there's very limited seating um, I think uh, uh I, I don't have an exact number of what's available in my head, but we have moved quite a bit of uh, pre-sale tickets. There are very few available still uh, online. Go to eventbrite.com and just search for Kettle Top Comedy, or about, you can just go to the Facebook page. How about VIP? Do you still have those? Yep. Uh, $20 for VIP, $15 general admission. The VIP seats are fantastic. You get um, table seating right in the front. Um, it's a very intimate atmosphere um, to, to see a show, and uh, you're not going to get an opportunity to see a... Uh, um, comic on the rise like like Jeff in a setting like this for very long um, he's going to be headlining clubs across the country right. in the next year or two um, so uh, come see him while he's in your backyard oh, so yeah. um, 
And also, you, you know, 20 bucks, you're going to go spend more than that at the bar anyway. Absolutely. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Sure. You, yeah you, you, you might as well come get a, get a show out of it. Um, but also, uh, to, to follow up that, um, a month from now, um, we have Dave Landau uh, oh, wow. coming in as well. And he's been featured on HBO. He's uh, Comedy Central Presents uh, Live at Gotham. Um, he's also the co-host of Anthony Cumia's podcast. Nice. Um, and uh, Which is a very funny podcast. You guys uh, should all go check it out when you're done listening to Juice. Um, and the Backstage Laugh podcast. <laughs> yes, when backstage you're done with laugh. those, go listen to that. Um, but yeah, that's coming up on October 13th, which is my birthday, so we're going to have a big-ass party. Hell yeah. Um, and yeah, we got some cool shit. Open mic coming up this Wednesday, the 12th. Um, anyone who wants to come see free uh, free comedy, we got a fun lineup. Um, I'm actually going to do the 15 minutes. Nice. Um, I got some uh, feature shows coming up um, and and potentially some other stuff coming up that I don't know if I'm at liberty to talk about yet. But uh, yeah. So, awesome. So what I got Dude, going on? I, I think you guys have so much going on up there. It's awesome. I'm glad that you have uh, stayed in touch with us and been able to come back down and do well, the podcast. Th- thanks for supporting, man. You, I mean, it's, you know, you guys and Smugcast, like they're driving from Greenwood. You're yep. driving from here to come up to Anderson and, and you know, drink, laugh and be merry. Right. And it's it just, you know. I, I, it means a lot. Thank for you. For sure, the October 13th, I think I can make. So I'm going to put that in my calendar. Do I don't that. know if I can make it this Friday, but October 13th, yeah. I'll be there. Um, Johnny is, uh, I think, joining me on Twitch on Monday nights. So at 8 p.m., I'm going to be streaming some games. It'd be Fortnite, Madden, whatever. Like, I'm just trying to get back into games. Yeah. I'm trying to do more stuff just because it creates content for this. So, yeah, absolutely. Like, absolutely. Like, going out, we went out Friday night. There's not a lot I can talk about on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, but, Mom. It, but it just gives us, it gives us stuff to talk about. I feel like it gives you, like, I'm just trying to do more. The jujitsu stuff is, is something that I'm interested in. The, the Twitch streaming with video games is something I'm interested in. It's twitch.tv, juice85 or 7. Um, very easy to find. I don't have a camera or anything yet, but you can hear us. James joins as well, and James has like 1,900 followers on Twitch. So he's, he's always somebody that can uh, bring in a lot of a lot of an audience. And like I said, I'm not any good, but you'll have a good time watching because we'll all be funny and have a good time. <laughs> Twitch is such an amazing thing to me. Um, when I try to explain it to older people, folks that are just older than myself that's gay <laughs> yeah, but yeah they're, they're, they're like they're, they're like my grandson just watches video games all day i'm like uh in, who's playing those video games someone on this someone on the computer is playing and he's just watching them play uh do you know how much money that person makes right per month they have 30,000 followers and they all donate a dollar yeah, yeah. yeah your grandson steals your credit card and <laughs> yeah. just gives this random stranger yeah. money so. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, absolutely like, on my stream I'm gonna if I ever start getting like kids I'm gonna be like alright so go into your parents bedroom <laughs> yeah and grab their credit card yeah. that they keep away for emergencies and yeah. then just put as much on it as possible for sure and, and, and go ahead and give me the last three digits <laughs> on the back yeah you, do you know what the CSC <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's such an amazing part of a modern economy. You know what I mean? It, I was reading about this the other day. The number one hospitality company in the world doesn't own a building, Airbnb. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. that's true. The number one transportation company in the world doesn't own a vehicle, mm-hmm. Uber. My mom and, really doesn't have a car. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, mom. <laughs> um, but, um, and no, no, no. You're you're good. And, and you know this the the um, the idea of taking what you already have and just finding a way to monetize it is is incredible. And that's, yeah, we're still you know, trying to figure out how to monetize anything that I do that's for fun. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Could, could you imagine getting paid to go out to the bar? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's where the Jersey Shore thing, that's oh, yeah. where that money is. Cause they, cause whenever they go into those clubs, do they get paid to be in there? Yeah. And yeah. you can tell because they keep people away from them too. Yeah. Which I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, good. Let's yeah. get a GoPro and make yeah. a Utes. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah absolutely. I gotta get some, gotta get some um, VIP. This, <laughs> this is kind of a fun fact and it blew my fucking mind about Snooki. Did you know that Rutgers paid her to speak? Yeah, at, I think I heard that. Like thirty two thousand dollars. They were they were they were really speak. struggling to find a speaker. Yeah, <laughs> good lord. Yeah, you could have paid me twelve dollars and I would have done a better job. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's like I she someone probably wrote a dope ass speech. She's just I'm just I'm, read it. I'm just wondering if they are if they are business savvy because I can clearly you could tell like I said I already I already spoke my my um, uh, love for DJ Pauly D. Um, 
I think he's the best businessman out of all of them because they were showing everybody's like house as they were getting like picking each other up to go yeah. on their family vacation, which is the name of the new season or whatever. And he's like got Bentley's literally in his high rise apartment in Vegas, like just sitting in his house, like Bentley's like, they're like, I don't know how he gets it out of his house. It's almost like the fast and the furious, like why have the car in there if you can't get it out to drive it? Yeah. But I don't know for sure if that's true, but I just know like, because when I, when I was watching it, I clearly remember seeing like vehicles and like super nice shit in his house. And then you see all of their other houses and they're like, doing well but they're not like in a badass high rise apartment that looks like it's probably a million dollar apartment like yeah. I mean it's probably 10,000 square feet and it's just filled with cool shit like, yeah. Fuck that, yeah. Dude's, that dude's living life and living and it right you, you were talking about things that we should bring back uh, we should bring back cribs yes uh, for sure MTV Cribs would <laughs> and be I want him to come to my house and uh, show yeah. <laughs> yeah Room Raiders um, <laughs> next uh, Room Raiders was hilarious yeah. with the black lights yes there they would like put the black yeah. light over somebody's bed and see like jizz stains <laughs> oh, oh yeah. yeah this guy's real real lonely yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Date My Mom I'd love to see that come back that would be weird um <laughs> That's but, actually why my parents got divorced. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, um, but that's the good. Uh, that w- where I was going with that is is I heard that most of the places on cribs were fake, were rented. Yeah, we're we're, we're like rented homes. Like yeah. one of the first ones Kim Kardashian ever did was rented. Like uh, the one that was good was Drake actually did his like parents' house where he was when he was still yeah. living at his parents' house and he was on like Degrassi. Yeah, yeah, it was wow. awesome. It was awesome. Yeah. Definitely look that up if We're you get a chance. Roll through the kitchen, real quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, these are uh, 16s on my wheelchair, dog. Yeah, no, but uh, he's another guy that, like, you know, I feel like it's completely a person uh, impersonation of who he really is. Like, he's not actually that badass dude. Like, he's more probably a chill dude. He's probably yeah. a cool guy. He is but, Canadian. Yeah, exactly. You know, how, how badass can you be and be a Canadian? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a show, too. Now we're we'll talking about Canada. Man, Trailer Park Boys, one of my favorites. I can't, I can't find, I can't find a way to end this episode because I just keep thinking of other stuff to talk yeah, about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you know the Twitch I mean, stuff. Johnny's uh, on all social media, right? Oh yeah. So look me up. Let's party. Jedi mind tricks. Yes, sir. Is it just spelled that way? Yeah. Jedi mind tricks. Um, but yeah. Oh, I, I thought you said Jedi mind tricks. Like you do, like you find active minds <laughs> and you do like tricks with them until they blow up. Uh, That'd be crazy. <laughs> that's, that's the next thing. Yeah. That's the next yeah. content right there. Jedi mind tricks on Jedi mind tricks. <laughs> but we are going, we are going out to Mac Miller, Donald Trump. Yeah. Wait. Thank you for joining me, Kyle. Thank you for joining yeah. me, Johnny. Right. And you can find me on social media at Uncle Buck's House, all platforms. All at Uncle Buck's House, Juice in the AM on Twitter and Instagram, and then Juice in the Morning on Facebook. I don't think I have anything else besides Twitch, Juice 85 or 7. Shane has taken a break from social media, so we're not even going to give his out. Um, and Shane didn't make it today because he had an issue with uh, transportation, but we will get him back next week. I don't even know who we have going on next week, so Johnny might be back as well if he's interested. Absolutely. So, I'm uh, going to shit like a hostage. Yep. <laughs> like, I'm about to go, I'm so, about to go perform an so we hope, downstairs. Got to shit like a hostage. That's hilarious. <laughs> so from all of us, we hope the juice is worth the squeeze, and we're out. Hey yo, Sap, what's good, bro? This man's kinda high up. He started out here locally, hopefully I'll be at the top soon For now I'm at my house, on the couch Watching cartoons, you know how much you love it When you get it in abundance Give a fuck about a budget when you always be the subject of discussion But it's nothing when you stop and just say fuck it Cause you walking out in public and you hear I'm talking rubbish I just wanna rap, ride through the city in a cutlass Find a big butt, bitch, somewhere get my nuts kissed That's the way it goes when you party just like I do Bitches on my dick that used to brush me off in high Shit, take over the world when I'm on my Donald Trump shit. Look at all this money, ain't that some shit? We gon' take over the world while these haters getting mad. That's why all my bitches bad. They see this crazy life I have in A&R. We gon' win, you can take the loser draw. What I'm in, got these hoes who used to play me in they bras. We gon' take over.